All right, Chef Buck here, and today we're going to cook up a little bit of a bean dip. You know, this is going to be a white bean puree, and I'm going to put it on a little uh, crostini. Put it on crackers. You could uh, use it as a dip for uh, chips. But the first thing we're going to do is I'm going to take a little bit of coconut oil and heat it up in a pan here. I got it on medium-high heat. All right, I got my oil heated up, and I'm going to reduce it down to medium. And I got me a whole boatload of garlic here, uh, chopped up. You know, it doesn't matter how you chop this stuff up because we're going to end up pureeing it later. I'm going to throw it in my oil there and give it a minute and let it color up a bit. And this is a lot of garlic, you know, but we're going to put a lot of beans in here. We're going to put a lot of mushrooms in here to make this dip. You know, so you're going to need that garlic uh, for that flavor. And the beans, this is just canned uh, white beans. And I got these rinsed and drained already. I'm going to go ahead and throw some crushed red pepper in here. You can put whatever kind of heat you like, or you don't have to put any heat at all. I'm going to throw a little black pepper in there too. So I've been stirring my garlic around here for a couple of minutes with these red pepper flakes, and I'm going to go ahead and add in some mushrooms. And I've already got these uh, mushrooms chopped up. And this is just some uh, regular white button mushrooms. I like to get the criminy mushrooms usually, but they kind of look pretty bad at the market today. So I just got the white ones, it doesn't matter. Put, a, put whatever kind you like in there. If you want to be fancy pants, you can use some uh, portobello mushroom, but that'd be just kind of a waste of money, really. And this looks like an awful lot, but these mushrooms are gonna cook way down. So we'll go ahead and give it a few minutes. Let these mushrooms uh, cook with this garlic and, and cook down a little bit. And when we blend these mushrooms up, it's going to meld really nicely with the beans. It's going to really help to smooth out the texture. I've had these cooking now for about three minutes. And they're cooking down pretty fast. I'm going to go ahead and throw, throw some uh, Worcestershire Worcestershire sauce in here. But I want this uh, dip, this spread, to have a lot of flavor. And adding Worcestershire Worcestershire sauce kind of adds a depth, a faux meatiness. Uh -huh. Alright, I'm going to turn it up. A little bit higher so now we're right in the middle of the uh, medium-high territory and I'm going to go ahead and add my beans I've already got them rinsed and drained now if you wanted to you could add some broth but I'm just going to throw a little bit of water in here and then just add uh, add water as needed just a little bit at a time because I don't want it to get too wet my plan with this is to use it as a spread on a toasted piece of bread so I don't want it to be overly wet and I'll add a little bit more water if I need to but I probably won't need to because I'm going to end up blending this down in a little bit with a little hand blender but you know you can use a food processor or just a regular blender mixer if you want but I'm going to go ahead and let this uh, simmer away for a couple of minutes all right now this has been bubbling away for about four minutes I'm going to go ahead and uncover it actually looks even wetter than when I covered it up, which is why you don't want to put a lot of liquid in here. Because the mushrooms and the beans, I mean, they have a lot of water in them already. So you want to take it easy on uh, putting, adding any broth or liquid to this. But I'm going to go ahead and reduce the heat down to a simmer. Put it on medium low. I let some of this moisture cook off before we add the rest of our ingredients. You know, the Worcestershire sauce really smells terrific in here. But I'm going to go ahead and uh, turn the heat off and add the rest of our ingredients. I'm going to throw in some uh, freshly grated Romano cheese. And you can use Parmesan, Asiago. You know, th those, are, those are the kinds that I would use. A nice, flavorful, hard cheese that will melt up and add to the creaminess of the dish. And I'm going to throw a little bit of salt in here too, but not a lot because there's quite a bit of salt in the cheese. But we'll add just a wee little bit, just because it's a bad habit. Stir it around and get that cheese nice and melted up. Now I'm gonna throw in my lemon juice. And if you don't have fresh lemon juice, you know, you could add a little vinegar if you wanted to. I mean, the Worcestershire sour sauce has some vinegar in it as well. But that lemon will add a nice, flavorful, bright bite to it. And the good thing about using fresh lemon is that you can add the zest as well for a little bit more flavor. Now all we got left to do is blend it up, but before I blend it up, I'm going to throw a little bit of olive oil in here. We got the oil, we got the mushrooms, we got the cheese, we got the beans, we got all these different elements that are going to help to make the dish creamy and smooth it out once we uh, go ahead and blend it up. 
And if you had a blender or a food processor, you could go ahead and transfer it over to that and to mix it up. But I'm just using a little handy dandy hand mixer right here. And whatever you're using to blend it up with, you can go ahead and blend it and make it as smooth as you like. If you need it to be a little wetter, you could add a little bit more olive oil in here if you wanted to. I'm going to go ahead and leave it right here because I like it to be kind of chunky. So this is about where I want it. So I'll go ahead and give it a careful taste test here. See if I can do it without burning my tongue too bad. That's just where I need it to be. You know, if I wanted to, I could add a little bit more... Um, Worcester sister sire sauce or some salt and the longer it sits around the more enhanced the flavor is going to become so I'm going to go ahead and take it off the burner and let it sit and cool off while I get my toasted crostinis ready I'm going to slice me up some thin pieces of nice chewy fancy pants bread but I'm going to toast them up plain I'm not going to put any kind of butter or flavorings on here at all because there's plenty of flavor in the bean dip and I'm just going to broil it for a few minutes until it's lightly toasted Get a nice light brown color to them and that's all there is to it. Now if you wanted to, you could just use it like a dip. You know, and you could uh, dip your bread in there or chips or whatever you like. Super flavorful. Mm -mm. But what I'm going to do is use it as a spread. And just kind of put a little bit on top, you know, and make a little bit of a crostini. And I'm going to serve it with a side salad. You can go ahead and top it with some capers. Uh, put some uh, green olives on there, some calamala olives, you know, whatever you like. You know, you can use it as a dip like this here. You know, serve it with a side salad like I'm doing right here. Oh, uh, nice crostini. This will be a nice light dinner for me. All right, a camera girl just walked in the door. So go ahead and uh, come on, do a taste test for me. See what happens when you work all day. I come you, home you, and there's when presents. Home, when you bring home the bacon, I'll fry it up in the pan. Okay. All right. Golly, that sounded loud. But uh, go ahead and give this uh, recipe a try. Uh, I got it uh, written down below if you want to take a peek at it. You know, there's links down there for everything that you could ever dream of. All of your dreams will come true down below. <laughs> but like it and share it and blah, blah, blah. And uh, bon appetit. And we'll see you in the future. Bye-bye.